Toby. I am here with my recap of week four of Survivor Caramoans, Philippine Islands 2, Fans vs. Favorites 2, Back in the Habit, for the Buff Company. Um, I am, we're using my shake weight, which is very tiring actually, uh, because I want to get stronger. This episode was all about being strong or being weak. And I thought I'd take this time to elaborate on what I talk about in my written blog and look at some ways in which people or the show were strong or weak this week. I get so weak. So first, let me talk about the things that were weak this episode. And I'm going to be honest, most of these things have to do with the fans tribe, the uh, Gota tribe. Um, first of all, we have the whole uh, HMR nonsense that's gone on. And I've made no bones about the fact that I don't like the person, I don't like him as a character, um, I'm not the only one from what I'm hearing, um, and uh, just the way he went out was like pretty like lame. This huge big guy who was like so tough and you know was in the war twice, and you know a grain, a grain of sand brings him down. How interesting that is. Um, but what was even worse to me, and just showed such weakness, was the way in which his tribe mates totally pandered to him when he made that ridiculous, you're going to bring me rice, demand. I mean, it was, I lost so much respect for them, and I lost a lot of respect for uh, Sherry, who thought she was doing the blind side. She supposedly had this big plan and knows how to work with these teenagers, and she let him walk all over her, and for nothing. Because she, uh, there was no way Shamar was doing the whole season um, when he didn't want to be there. Like, come on, he said a number of times, I don't want to be here. <laughs> And um, so if it, was, it was a grain of sand in the eye today, if it wasn't that, it would have been something tomorrow. It would have been he forgot to turn off his toaster, or, you know, his pet the bunny needed to be fed back at home, or, you know, or just something. And he would have blamed something and he would have been gone. It's obvious. And Sherry is supposed to know how these dishes work. Like, let him walk all over her, made her deliver rice to him, and, and then loses him, and then loses another one of her alliance. Now they're down six to nine versus the favorites, and she has no power. So all her scheming was for naught. Um, uh, she over-schemed, and you can't place your faith in somebody who is going to check out one way or another. I get so weak. Well, something, uh, you know who else is pretty lame, and was pretty lame at Tribal Council, is um, Eddie. He shouldn't talk. He really shouldn't. I mean, one of the things he said was that he, you know, he believes that they start winning challenges, they don't have to come back to tribal council. Oh, is that how it works? Oh my god, well thank god he came up with that after 26 seasons. I mean, no one cracked that code. Wow. Hey, god, you know, hey, just... I am, uh, that guy's got a lot, a lot to offer, and I guess whatever young woman ends up with him is just lucky. So lucky. Um, also, <laughs> you know, Eddie's talking about, you know, we're great in challenges. It is kind of Eddie's fault they lost last week. That grappling hook thing that he, I don't know why he wouldn't give it up to somebody else to do, because he wasn't that good at it, was, you know, I mean, they were, they could have won. So, you know, Eddie... Let's be able to back off a little bit off the year lose challenges if we're not here. Uh, it's most likely true, but uh, let other people realize it and, you know, and also maybe prove yourself a little bit. Um, so that said, that's like the, you know, the people that were weak. And uh, let's talk now about Eddie's partner, Reynolds, who actually, believe it or not, leads off my talk about things and people that were strong. Stronger. So let's take a moment to talk about Reynolds. Reynolds, um, it doesn't seem like a mean guy, maybe, but it's just very entitled, and, and ha he's, he's like Mitt Romney, really. He really is like Mitt Romney. Just, you know, he's fine, and but just doesn't have the social skills to deal with, like, how real people um, are in the world. He's been, you know, blown up, I'm sure, his whole life to be, you know, so you're amazing, you're amazing. However, unlike Mitt Romney, Reynolds comes through when he needs to, which is in these challenges. Reynolds is a challenge beast, and you cannot take that away from him. Reynolds kicks butt in these challenges. What's funny is, um, you know, he's up against Malcolm, you know, a lot. It's often Malcolm versus Reynolds in these um, sort of head-to-head -head mashups. 
And Reynolds it does really well at things, and it's throwing and aiming and, and all these things. And it's funny that actually uh, Reynolds and Eddie, um, who generally, except for last week, does well in challenges, are becoming Jeff's new um, challenge crushes. Last season, he was like in love with Malcolm. And this season, Malcolm's doing great, but like not as well as these two new guys. And Jeff totally is like, especially Eddie, is just like into it, like a little too into it. Um, so Malcolm has been left behind, and Jeff has moved on to his new bromance, which is um, Eddie and Reynolds. So, um, you know, just that's Malcolm, you gotta come with it. You gotta come with it. Reynolds shows you up. Jeff has moved on, and it's cute to see. So cute. Speaking of the challenges, I gotta say, these challenges this season are amazing. One of the strong points of the season. They are doing a lot of things that don't involve puzzles, which and they're just a lot of things in the water, which I love, and a lot of multi-part things that, um, you know, sort of start with a few people and then involve everyone. Um, bits of other challenges we've seen in the past, but, you know, with a different, whole different, you know, beginning on. I love the platform challenge. It involved teamwork. It involved strength. It involved all sorts of things that involved everyone getting up on that platform. They've done that before, but that was interesting. And they're very close, actually. And so the challenges are a real highlight for me for this season. So bravo to the um, Dream Team, I think what they're called, um, that makes up those challenges. They're doing great. It was fun to see them a little bit back to their heads uh, demonstrating the platform challenge, too. And I hope that they're going to have a lot of great more challenges for the rest of the season. Keep going. Brings us to the Philippine Islands. That place showed that it was strong and nothing to be messed with in many ways. First of all, uh, Tata, the little Filipino Bushman, he was uh, amazing. So tiny, like if you just saw him, like if he was in clothes like we wear, and you just saw him, you'd be like, oh, look at that little weak guy. No, that guy was just the strongest thing out there. He was showing them how to build things and make things and do all this, and the whole time with like just a, a, a light in his eyes and just funny and just and just and humorous and just like, like all the things I love about uh, Filipino people, including my. He's a Filipino. Um, Gollum, well, I'm going to be visiting my 95-year-old Filipino Betty White grandma in a couple weeks. So I'm going to see, it's the same kind of idea, the same kind of joy and love of life. And, um, and just like Tata, she cooked rice like a mofo. Okay, uh, it was great to see him. It was great to see all that strength in that little body. And um, I enjoyed finally seeing this, you know, real close, uh, close up um, time spent with someone from the Philippine Islands. Wait for it for a season and a half. And, uh, but also, I mean, the Philippines, the natural, uh, you know, part of it then uh, was really rough. That hurricane was no joke. And those rats, I mean, uh, they weren't really rats like New York sewer rats, it didn't seem, but they were rats like, we will climb up on you and hang out with you and see what you're doing, rats. And I was not in them. Oh, hell to the hell to the hell to no. That was so gross. That was so nasty. And uh, I was like, wow, I'm a little tiny rats. They are brave. They will come. They will steal your lunch money. And I was, oof. Uh, oof. Mm. Anyway, Philippines, you really showed uh, in many ways through your people and through your uh, nature and through your rodents uh, just how strong you are. And that kind of explains why we're back for a second season in the same location. Because you Philippines got a lot to show us, and it was nice to see it. Well, Survivor Buffs, uh, that's uh, our episode for this week, which leads me to uh, declare our wearer of the week. And that is, of course, Tata, the Filipino Bushman, who got to wear a tribal buff uh, while he was getting kissed by all those girls in that amazing, adorable scene. Um, from his visit to the Favorites Tribe. Um, so that's uh, week four. I'm uh, excited for next week. It looks like Brandon Hans finally really does lose his mind. So I'm excited for that. I'm also tired of doing this shake weight, which is a harder exercise than you would think. Um, you know, let's go wait. Um, <laughs> um, I'll see you guys next week. And um, until then, stay strong. Oh, oh.